Hello guys, Sid the IT guy here and this is a video about order fulfillments and some of the functionalities have been added to the app where I have created this orders page and each of the orders can be now clicked and can be viewed. So if we for example click 1005 then you will see this page where it says what the payment status is, what the fulfillment status is and what the order date is and there you have the items and you have the shipping address and the billing address and at the bottom you have the subtotal the shipping total shipping amount and the total order amount so that's why that is what i have uh, added to the app now the thing that we are be we are looking into this app is fulfilling orders so in any order management app what you do is you pull the orders in your database and you forward it to the logistics partners and after you do that the logistic partner take care of delivering the product to the customer when that happens the logistics customer the logistics provider gives you a tracking url which you have to put in shopify to mark the order as fulfilled so this is what we are doing here so on the actions um, select here i have added an item called fulfill items so when you click it you will have this fulfill button in front of every line item this is a simple implementation there is nothing fancy going here so that i will get into later but first i need to I need to address this API documentation issue that Shopify has, which is, isn't beginner friendly at all. So if anybody from Shopify is watching this, please uh, re rewrite the documentation and add some additional information there. So it is easy for beginners to pick it up how the new fulfillment flow is done. So in 2019 version of the API, all we had to do is just hit one endpoint and that was done. But now we have all the order fulfillments and fulfillment service and fulfillment orders and fulfillment request APIs uh, in the Shopify API. So which is a little, yeah. So if I open up the documentation, we will see that there is fulfillment and there is fulfillment event, fulfillment order, fulfillment request and fulfillment service, all kind of APIs. So it gets kind of a little confusing because uh, the documentation does cover it but it might not be beginner friendly as much as we want it so where does it all begin so it all begins at the api scopes and also i want to address this one issue which community shopify has where multiple people have posted about their problems uh, regarding uh, fulfillments but uh, they don't receive a response from shopify so please address that and uh, so here the tutorial begins so in the api scopes for the app I have added five additional permissions. So these are read part, third party fulfillment orders, write assigned fulfillment orders, read assigned fulfillment orders, read merchant managed fulfillment orders and write merchant managed fulfillment orders. So these API scopes are necessary to be added in your app if you want to read the fulfillment orders related to an order. So on Shopify admin what happens is when an order is placed then Shopify will automatically create fulfillment orders for that order and you would have to sync it in your database. So if your app has these permissions then you can make the API call and you can sync it. So let's take a look at when I'm doing that. So in show order method of Shopify controller um, I am getting the order here store get orders relationship where table ID is ID and first. So this is a relationship that I have defined. So if it doesn't exist, then dispatch this job straight away. So order fulfillments job you will see here in jobs Shopify sync folder here, which does just one thing. It calls the endpoint order slash order ID fulfillment orders dot JSON since ID this. Now since ID is used to paginate over the records, so that's fine. So it does the same thing like the order synchronization is there. So it will sync up all the order fulfillments related to the order. So let's take, take a look at the database. Then you will see this table fulfillment order data. The migration is defined. Uh, so please run PHP artisan migrate before you do anything. So here we see that order table ID uh, is here and uh, this is the fulfillment order ID and these are the supported actions. So one order can have multiple fulfillment orders to it and we have to make sure that we don't get duplicated rows obviously so here are the line items uh, which is segregated so let's take a look at how shopify presents it by taking a look at the admin so i have order 1005 open here so this is not the correct example i should show so let's take a look at 1011 this is the perfect one yeah. 
so 1011 so you will see this uh, separation according to the locations for the products so full sleeve tee simple t-shirt and white bordered shirt are here in unfulfilled and in the rest unfulfilled for the location CJ drop shipping we have these products so this is what happens with uh, fulfillment orders so it is separated out and that's a separate record for the API that you have to sync in your database now you will see that uh, for my example the full sleeve tee doesn't have the fulfill button and the simple t-shirt and white border t-shirt doesn't have the fulfill button we can directly fulfill these orders because they belong to a location my apartment which is in-house location for the store now CJ drop shipping is an external uh, service that we will deal with later but first I have to explain what does in-house location mean so if you go to settings and if you take a look at locations then you will see locations here and the third party locate services that manage inventory is here so CJ drop shipping is here as an app location which is third party and this is the in-house location that we have so this is how Shopify will segregate out these orders and that's how it works that is why we have multiple records for the same order ID here so for order 93 we have two records and each of them have their own supported actions so in supported actions we can see that there is request fulfillment create fulfillment and hold and uh, create fulfillment and hold so for the records that have create fulfillment in it you can directly fulfill them uh, by calling one api endpoint but for the ones that have request fulfillment in it you first have to uh, call the api for requesting the fulfillment in which case the third party api service will handle the fulfillment for you so now let's go over yeah the implementation so in show.blade which is responsible for uh, showing the order data here yeah so now let's go over the implementation in the blade.php file that is responsible for showing this information you will see that i have added this td style display none which will be not visible when you load it first but when you click actions yeah but when you click the actions has a change event and if the value is fulfill items then i'm just removing this display none and i'm adding css display block so here you can see that uh, in item fulfillment uh, sorry this, so here you can see that for this td if the item fulfillable quantity index is greater than zero only then i'm rendering this so this is important because the line items that you are choosing to fulfill should be fulfillable first so this is what you can get in the order json array so let me show you the what the line items are so if i do order line items yeah so we have a full array of line items and inside all of them we get some common common uh, fields so here is fulfillable quantity one and here is also one so if it is greater than zero then we can assume that we can fulfill those line items so that is why the condition is there now for my example i know that these products that have the long names are from CJ drop shipping and the ones that have the short names are from the in-house location so the, these are the ones i am fulfilling i will cover uh, third party um, inventory fulfillments in the next video and uh, the example that we are looking at is based on rest api so if you want me to do a graphql api version of this uh, please let me know i'll be happy to do a video for you L let's see what happens when you click fulfill okay so this is okay so anyway so when you click any fulfill button then this model is uh, popped up which has the number the shipping company the number of packages uh, the message custom and the tracking url and if i want to notify the customer or not so these fields are what are necessary to call the fulfillments json endpoint so if we yeah this is the one so in the curl example of it we can see that the fulfillment is sitting on the parent index and uh, let's copy this so i can show you in a json online editor yeah so we can see the fulfillment is on the parent index we have the message we have the notify customer as a boolean tracking info has number url and company and line items by fulfillment order this parameter is important because uh, this is the one that will determine which of the line items and how many of them will be fulfilled.
so let's go to the uh, project once yeah so this is the form that you fill up and when you click fulfill then i will take all the values uh, from here and call the api so if you show on blade if you scroll down a little so fulfill submit class if you click it then uh, it will take the whole form data which is here and it will populate the order id the line item id that you just chose and do notify customer from the checkbox and it will call this route so let's take a look at what this route is so fulfill web.php if i search it then it is here it is a post request to order slash fulfill and in shopify controller let's take a look at fulfill order so this is the function that is responsible for fulfilling the, the line item that we just chose so take everything from the request take the authenticated user uh, get the store and get the order and fulfillment line item is offloaded to this function and if it uh, so basically what we are doing is for the multiple request for the multiple records that this order has i'm just trying to find which one has the line item that i just chose so the line items column here which has the data like this so it also has the line item id in it which is just below the cursor if you can see so let me copy this yeah yeah so each of the line items also has the line item id here so this is what i'm trying to match here so this will do that i will get into it a little later if it is not equal to null then just get the payload and get the shopify url for fulfillment station simple enough get the shopify headers and make an api call with post and uh, if the status code is 201 then we know that a new fulfillment was created and uh, we can sync the order that just got fulfilled one more time so there is a new job that i have written one order so as you can see the class is app jobs shopify sync one order which is right here so what this will do if instead of uh, synchronize, synchronizing all the orders it will only sync just one order which we are currently working with so you get the updated information about the order straight away now let's get uh, take a look at this function yeah so i'm taking the line item id which i'm getting from the request then i'm calling this uh, property which will give me multiple rows um, for the fulfillment orders and i'm looping over it one by one and i'm taking the line items and if the item line item id is exactly equal to search variable which is here then return the line items i mean the whole collection of uh, line items after that so if it is not equal to null then get the payload so inside the payload you will see that there is a simple array i have defined so fulfillment is on the parent index and we have the message we have the notify customer as a boolean uh, this will evaluate as a bool um, the tracking info has the number url and company and the last parameter is the most important parameter before you make the api call which is line items by fulfillment order so fulfillment order array is a function which is defined right below and again i'm trying to find uh, the line item id is exactly equal to the search and when it is then the temp temporary payload has two indexes in it fulfillment order id and fulfillment order line items so if you take a look at the documentation it is mentioned there but you can miss it very easily so in the example that they have used so let's copy this one more time yeah so in the line items by fulfillment order in the official example we don't see the second index so what happens is for this fulfillment order id it will fulfill all the line items that have this property with them this value with them i'm sorry so the second parameter that we're gonna have to work with is this which is inside here which is mentioned inside here so fulfillment order line items is an array um so this has two this should be an array of an array and this this should have two attributes the id and the quantity so this is what i have done here so along with uh, fulfillment order id i have fulfillment order line items and in the id i am passing the line item id and in the quantity i am passing how many number of packages i need to fulfill so that's it after this happens after this happens then this post call goes through and if the status code is 201 then return the response straight away and uh, otherwise return as false so we would know that we didn't find um, the fulfillment line item that we are looking for 
and uh, if any error happens then return this response which should tell you exactly what the issue is and where it is okay so this is a pretty simple example using the rest api um i will do a graphql api version of this also and again i will also do fulfillments for the products which are belonging to a third party service because that is a whole other uh, paradigm where we have to work with um, the fulfillment request object so fulfillment request.json uh, is the one api that we are we will have to use and this will require another scope which is third party fulfillment orders so let's see if we have that already no we don't so let's add it yeah and uh, i can work with it and create a new video about it so we can work with uh, fulfillment request api and that will cover the fulfillments of third party services yeah so that is it uh, covers for this video like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and uh, if you want to see a graphql api version of this please comment down below i'll be happy to cover that and if you have any other doubts then you can you can comment down below as well and uh, check out my channel while you are at it and that's about it thank you